definitely doesn't move so much. You don't want the tornado to move so fast. Time is barely on our side. I don't wanna waste what's left. The storms we chase are leading us. What's up, YouTube? So recently, I sold my Lightning Strike character, and I decided to sell it because I got jabated by this new skin. It's called the Maroider Body Armor. Now, there's also an Instacker skin coming out called Big Brain, and the bigger your or the higher your int, the bigger your brain is. But for Maroider, the more strength you have, the more buff you have, you, the more buff you become. So look at my character: seventeen hundred strength. It actually only goes up to, I think, around 1500. So if I take off this amulet, well, oh my goodness, my character became, he lost all his gains. <laughs> oh my goodness, what? So maybe something a little bit less than uh, 1300. I mean, it's still the same, right? Yeah, so 1300, there's no real break point. But what if you go down to 800? It's 800 and 1300 different. Well, he still looks around the same. What about if you go lower? You think 800 is the base strength? 776. I guess there's just too many points on my tree with strength. But basically, you can make your person into a Giga Chad beefcake. And then, wow, that's a big jump, right? So that is actually sick. But the skin was what, 30 bucks? Not really sure how worth it it was. But. It's good. It makes it fun, and I do think I like a lot more of these MTX effects where they have stuff that scales of your attributes and, and other stuff like that. So maybe I'll do an Instacker next, kind of working on the 11 Link 1 in-game right now, but we'll see how it goes. But let's go 
over why Venom Gyre is so good still and if there's any changes for this build and if you can actually play this build because it might be quite expensive. Now, as you saw earlier in the footage, Uber Maven absolutely evaporated. I don't really know if Uber Maven even has more life than regular Maven because it died so fast. And as you see in Simulacrum, this build is as good as a Simulacrum as it has ever been. And the main difference between this skill that I personally found to be quite jarring is the lack of Headhunter being really good anymore. Headhunter used to be really good for Venom Jar. It was probably one of the best skills scaling for some reason in that you got extra projectiles which makes you do more burst damage. And you also got all of these rare buffs. I don't know if it's extra chaos damage or something, but it made it so you got integer value real fast. Uh, by integer value, I mean when you see your DPS number and it becomes too high, it won't show up anymore. And it's actually crazy. Well, I just want to show you something. So a lot of people are wondering, why is the damage so high? Why do you need Battle Mage's Cry? Venom Jar damage is 252k, right? Battle Mage's Cry, 2.2 mil, almost 10 times damage. But basically, Headhunter nerf is not exactly the best for the build, but the build is still perfectly fine. I was farming Crimson Temple 100% Delhi. I did find my first ever Apothecary card, and I will make I a video about what it. I did to farm it, and it's actually right here. Apothecary, I also found a Mirror Shard card. So definitely kind of fun, and very good mapping build, and very good Simulacrum Farmer. Now the biggest problem you might see is that bossing is sometimes not ideal due to having to use Whirling Blades on top of the boss. And what this means is if, if you want to play with Venom Jar, you need to know the mechanics of the boss pretty well so that you know when you have the opportunity or the window of time to use Whirling Blades to do your maximum damage of boss. Now you could potentially just play the character as a ranged spectral throw character. There's no, you, like, this is more than enough damage to kill everything because it will be around 40 to 50 mil DPS. But if you want the maximum damage, you want to be Whirling Blades and name locking on top of the boss. So that's the main thing, not exactly the best bosser, especially if you're doing like Maven where there's some ground degen. But as I showed you in the beginning video, you can easily work your way around it. Now I quickly wanted to go over the main differences from the build from 3.17 as there are quite a few. Now the main problem from before is if we look at the builds from the past, let's go to PoE Ninja. When we go to PoE Ninja, we see from last leak, everyone was using an Eyes of the Great Wolf pretty much. And the reason being is that it seems like a really easy way to fix all your stats. Now, the, there's also a mirror tier amulet out there that people were using. But you can see here, this is a perfect Eyes of the Great Wolf. It has 32% increased attributes, 60% multi. Now, from my testing, and I only did this testing because there was no real amazing Eyes of the Great Wolf for sale is that a rare synthesized amulet beats out Eyes of the Great Wolf. And I wish that I actually knew about this earlier. And the reason being is that the flat stats and attributes are too much to overcome for the 14% increased strength. And you also get a bunch of crit multi, which also helps out a lot. And this amulet is pretty easy to craft. You just spam essences of the strength essence until you get all attributes. And then you do suffixes, cannot be changed, and reforge crit to try to hit the crit multi. Then after that, you do Reforge Caster or Reforge Chaos, and then you can all Chaos, all Caster, and craft on life. Or you can actually gamble and try to get projectile speed and projectile damage. But this amulet, in my opinion, is much better than Eyes of the Great Wolf, and you can potentially craft it for a lot cheaper, although the suffixes are kind of annoying. Because I think if you... If the build gets popular, Eyes of the Great Wolf ends up being around like 20, 30, 40, 50x maybe for a perfect roll. Now, Mage Blood is the superior belt of choice as Headhunter is nerfed. So, as you can see here, I am using a Mage Blood with the enemies withered by you, have minus 6% 6 to all res. Now, the main difference between this and previous leagues is if you didn't have a Headhunter, you would use a Strength Implicit Synthesized Base. And I decided to switch it up to a Mage Blood purely because Mage Blood allows you to fix a lot of your issues with the build. And this build is very limited on resistances. Is very limited on mana and it's hard to cast skill because you don't really leech that much and you have so this mana cost now is one and it's very important for the mana cost because you want to be able to throw out your blades before the boss and then you can whirl these blades when the boss spawns for maximum damage with all of the blades that you catch now this does mean that we lose a big chunk of damage because you can actually get around 18% synthesized strength on the belt. But we're able to make this up because the previous 
version of the build, you couldn't really make it work with a percent strength belt without getting some resist on your ring. So Mage Blood allows us to get resist on our flask, which in turn allows us to use the synthesized strength ring. And this actually helps us out a lot in what's it called? Increasing our damage to compensate for the damage loss. But basically, these rings aren't even well rolled. I pretty much just spam some strength essences. I need to finish crafting it. I do have some bases that I have, which is a crit multi base. And I also have another crit multi base. So I need to recraft them, which is a lot of essence spamming and luck. But we might do that today on stream. Now, another thing I changed up is I'm not using Whispers of Doom and Despair Ring due to From the Shadows node. I realized it was pretty good. I did a lot of poppy, and even though it turns out to be less damage, from the shadows actually gives us elusive effect, which actually increases our survivability. So I decided to anoint this instead of Whispers of Doom. And if you do use Whispers of Doom, that means that you have to get a Despair Ring, because for my build currently, I'm running a Bottle Faith. Oh, not Bottle Faith, a Dying Sun, so I can't use Witchfire Brew, and I don't really want to use a Mage Blood with three flasks, because that's kind of gimped. So basically, From the Shadows gives us both near similar damage and it gives us more damage almost because you get to use the percent strength synthesized ring and you also get the defensive bonus from Elusive Effect. Now lastly, the biggest change I did make was I did change up the tree a lot in order to fit Inspire Loading. I dropped the Lethal Pride setup down here and it is a kind of a little bit of a damage loss, but this Ranger node over here is actually pretty strong in terms of fixing a lot of our issues. We are able to fix the Suppression over here. We're able to fix that these nodes are just very good in terms of accuracy, rating, and attack speed. Frenzy charge is always nice. And then this crit node is actually really useful as this build is actually kind of crit starved as we're not using brittle or any, anything. So it ends up being kind of a net even in terms of damage loss, even though we have a lot less strength. So even though we have 1800 or 1900 strength, we have more stats or attributes that are able to scale our flat damage. So like attack speed and crit. So it ends up being a little bit more even and Inspired Learning is just way too good in my opinion. You just can't beat Inspired Learning, especially if you're doing Juice Maps and Simulacrum. It just feels way too good to be true. Now, this is the real issue with the build and this is like why I kind of discourage people from immediately playing it, especially if you don't have that much money. I just wanted to be right upfront about it is that this build is very expensive for starting out. There's no other way to put it. Replica boots are very rare. Not that many people do heists that often and these boots are often price fixed pretty high Especially if I make a video about it or I'm playing the bill. I think it was 20x before I started now It's already 30x and lastly, I think it went up to around 45x So you have to watch out for the price of the boots But once you have the boots everything else has slots that have alternatives that are a lot cheaper helmet So I'm using the strength helm so if we go over the strength helm, can be replaced with a crown of eyes, which is around the same. Red blade banner is generally very cheap. The synthesized strength amulet is around one X, and you can just spam some essences on it, and it shouldn't really cost you that much to craft it. You don't need to use synthesized strength implicit belt. You can just look for a ring with strength and all attributes and life, and that shouldn't run more than one X each at most. The chest is around five X for the six link, and including the colors. Now the claw is a little bit different. The claw you can settle with something worse and that you can use a lower fracture attack speed, but the claw is a fairly deterministic craft in that you spam will essences and then you have to go buy an aug chaos and an aug crit and then you have to reforge a veil chaos over to try to get the chaos pen. But it's a very deterministic craft and this claw I have right here costs around 30x with the base fracture attack speed costing 15. I'm not really sure how much it is anymore. The gloves, you can make these for like 1 to 2x. You don't need the best roll of attack speed or suppression. And the boots are, as I said, 30x. And I think the synthesized implicit strength belt is probably around 4x. Not too sure. And these flasks are just mage blood flasks. Now, something to know in the tree is that the most important things for this build that are going to be the most expensive are going to be the boots and the clusters. The clusters are very expensive and phantom blades you need phantom blades and you want a three notable one so that you can save as many points as possible and ideally you want fuel to fight mandatory because you need the mana leech and feed the fury is the best damage option but you can also use other ones and if you don't use feed the fury or fuel to fight i think a three notable one could be a lot cheaper like maybe two to three x 
but for the best ones, they range anywhere from 5 to 10x. A Megalomaniac is actually not needed, although it's very strong. And I did test out some simulacrums without it, and it's perfectly fine. Now, for these jewels here, Inertia, they're probably like dirt cheap unless you get the stun implicit. Inspire Learning is like 3x, I think. Uh, Forbidden Flame and Flesh. Now, these jewels you don't need to start off, but these jewels get very, very expensive. Very limited supply, but these things are completely crazy. If you look at the Whirling Blade, the tax fee is 0.38 without one the undeniable jewel. It goes down to 0.53. So what this node does is it gives you a tax fee per accuracy rating, and then you gain accuracy rating equal to twice your strength. So very, very strong forbidden jewel. And then Watcher's Eye, you pretty much are just looking for Chaos res while affected by Purity of Elements. And that's really the only mod you need on the Watcher's Eye. And it's actually relatively affordable. Now, like I said, main items you want to look for in this build is definitely boots and clusters. So if you want to play it, make sure you have enough money for the boots and clusters and everything else should kind of fall in line as long as you have some leftover exalts. Now, overall, what do I think about this build? I still think Venom Gyre is the most fun skill. I still think that GGG should add an MTX. And I don't know why they don't already do it. And this build is actually probably one of the best builds at around 200x budget. It has a very, very high floor once you invest into it just because strength stacking is such a broken concept if you look at what strength stacking actually gives you it gives you life it gives you max block of the chest it gives you insane attack speed with undeniable it gives you max crit with your helmet and it also gives you max accuracy with the undeniable jewel or the helmet i think right yeah the helmet gives you gain accuracy rating equal to strength and it gives you increased crit chance per 10 strength so all of this synergy makes strength stacking able to be used with pretty much any skill. You can play this with Lightning Strike, you can play this with Spectral Throw, you can play this with Frost Blades. And last but not least, you get to use the best skin in the game, which is the Maroider. But yeah, maybe I'll do an in-stacker next with the Big Brain with a wand, but we'll see how it goes. But thanks for watching everyone. I hope you decide to try out this build. It's been a blast playing it, and I'll probably be playing it until I reach 100. But let me know down in the comments below if you want to see a full guide for this or if you want to see a Crimson Temple farming for a Apothecary video. But uh, I hope you find more mirrors, exalts, and apothecaries than me. And see you next time. Bye.